Mm. Hi there, beautiful people. It's summertime. Oh my gosh, I love the summer. I mean, the sun is rises really early and then it stays up and it sets late. Like it's like nine o'clock before the sun goes down. And I get to spend a ton more time out in the garden and taking long hikes around the lake or in the mountains. And like, summertime is so beautiful, but honestly, man, Arkansas summer, it is beautiful and it is brutal. It's definitely the paradox, right, of beauty and brutality because we have so many bugs. There are mosquitoes, there are ticks, there are chiggers, there are spiders. And then there's all the bugs that eat your plants in the garden. There are so many bugs. But fortunately for us, we also have fireflies. And so that kind of makes it all worth it. But no, seriously, our, in the summertime, like being outside, my family is riddled with bug bites and it's they're irritating and they complain about the bug bites and it bothers us so bad and then it's like happened for months and months that these bug bites are irritating us. So today we're going to talk about and I want to introduce you to one of my favorite summertime herbs which is plantain. And why it's one of my favorite herbs is because it is one of the best natural, one ingredient, anti-itch, bug bite relief remedy known to humankind. And really, I want you to stick around if you wanna watch this video because if you agree with loving summer and with being bothered by bug bites and you really like learning about super cool herbs. And if this is the first time meeting, my name is Maria Chaudhry. I'm a midwife and an herbalist and the creator of Birdsong Botanicals. We make nourishing herbal remedies for women and children, and we carry on the healing traditions and the science and the wisdom of midwives and herbalists. And this video is a live video. So even though I don't see the comments because I'm in front of the camera, heaven is behind the camera. So I encourage you to like and heart and share your insights and ask questions and then when we get to the end of the video we can answer those questions right okay so let's get started talking about plantain so plantain has its latin name which is plantago maior which is really helpful so you don't think of plantain as the banana because it's not the banana and then it has a common name which is plantain and it also has another common name, which is the Band-Aid plant. And plantain grows in nearly every area around the United States. It's native to Europe, it's native to Asia, and it just spreads really quickly. And so now it has spread into Latin America, it has spread into Africa, it's spread into Australia, it's spread into New Zealand, and essentially, plantain is a little bit of a hitchhiker. It just follows the settlers. So that's how it came to the United States, is when the Europeans came over and the new pioneers and the settlers came over, they brought plantain with them. So then all the indigenous people in the United States and also the indigenous people in other regions like in New Zealand, when they would see plantain, the first words they came up with is like, oh, that's the English, English man's plant or English man's footprint or the white man's footprint. And so, because anywhere that the newcomer came, plantain just followed right behind, right? And so plantain really, you know, let me, I wanna share with you what it looks like. We're inside and so we're not outside, so we're gonna have to kind of just do it like this. I have some leaves. Essentially, there are a few varieties of plantain. There are, there's broadleaf plantain, which is this one. And so broadleaf plantain, heaven showing you, right? And then, so think of a broadleaf. It's a little bit oval. See how it's wide and oval? And then if you see down at the stem on the bottom, on the one that heaven has, it might have more purple than the one that I have. But that's a, an indicator, a diagnostic tool of this purple color. And then on mine, you can see that it has this fibrous, stringy tissue. 
and this these fibers run up through the stem up through the leaf and it makes a parallel pattern you can really see it clear on the back of the leaf right and then there is narrow leaf plantain and I apologize for my specimen here because it's mowing day and so this is the best one I could find but narrow leaf plantain is almost like a sword. See how it's long and lean and comes to a point? Also at the bottom where it grows, there is usually a purple color. And you'll also see that really stringy fibrous tissue runs through the leaf in a parallel pattern. And when you flip it over on the back, you can really see that parallel pattern. And then, like I said, this, this plant is a low-lying plant. It grows in a rosette, so it's like a round plant. And these leaves come out from the center, and then through the very center grows a seed pod. And so for the broadleaf seed pod, it is, mine's starting to wilt, it has more of the seeds, and so mine is like about to flower. And then Heaven's gonna show you one that's about to flower and it's just starting to flower and then she's gonna show you one that's going to seed. So essentially, it, the flower takes up quite a bit of the stem. Okay, so I'm gonna let her show you that. See, that one's about to go to seed. See, it's starting to become brown. Right, and then the last one is more brown. Right, and so you can see eventually that's usually how you recognize it is you'll see that really brown sticking up. And then the narrow leaf plantain, it same grows down low, a rosette, the leaves come from the base, and then out there grows this this flower, and it has a very tall, long stem. And then at the very tip of the stem, it gets brown, and that's where all the seeds are. And then at the top, it has this little tiny, cute little halo at the top. And so that is a really, that's the way you can recognize it. And I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I used to pick these and then turn them. And I would try to, it's been a long time, but I would try to shoot them at shoot them at my opponent, shoot them at my friends, you shoot them out. Okay, so this is essentially what plantain looks like, and I want you to know what it looks like, and there's so many videos and plant identifying apps for you to utilize, but plantain, you'll recognize it because it is growing in your yard, okay? But I don't want you to get too overly concerned about which variety of plantain that you have, because all the varieties are pretty much interchangeable. So don't worry of like which one's which one's the best one to put salve, which one is the best one to make a tea out of, which one is the best one for a bug bite. Just whatever one is growing in your yard is the best one. And they're interchangeable. Okay, so when you think about plantain and its benefits and its medicinal properties, I mean it's a long list, right? So plantain is emollient. It's soothing, it's moistening, it's protecting, it's antiseptic, anti-inflammatory, anti-itch, analgesic, it's styptic, that means it helps stop bleeding. It repairs tissues. It's excellent externally for all sorts of skin irritations like rashes, bites, cuts, scrapes, burns, stings, bruises infections and hemorrhoids and it's really great and ideal for internal conditions such as ulcers painful irritated inflamed lungs urinary and bladder infections constipation diarrhea irritable bowel indigestion gut inflammation so it's just soothing all the hot inflamed things on the inside and soothing all the hot inflamed things on the outside. Plantain is both food and medicine. 
And it can be applied to your body, like we're about to talk about bug bites, but it can be applied to your body. You can just lay the whole leaf on your body, and that's how it got its name as the Band-Aid plant because it's going to be analgesic and stop the bleeding and stop the pain and stop the itch, and you can just apply it directly. That's how it got its name. So, but you can lay it directly on. You can chew it up and make a spit poultice. You can make a compress. You can make a wash. You can uh, make a bath. You can spray it on. You can put it in a liniment and rub it in. You can drink it as a tea. You can take it as an herbal liquid extraction. You can take it as a pill or a capsule. What else can you do? Oh, you can infuse it in olive oil and beeswax, and then you can turn it into um, an ointment, into a cream, into a lip balm, into a salve. So it's like, it can lend itself in many different ways. The thing is, on its own, without putting it into a tea, without putting it into a capsule, without extracting it, without doing anything to it, without altering it in any way, on its own, plantain is a complete whole medicine, right? And it, on its own, can be so effective and so potent that it doesn't need to be added to anything else for it to work effectively. At the same time, plantain is so amazing that it, it blends well and works well with other herbs. And it's not in competition with the other herbs, it just enhances the other herbs. So it blends really well with herbs like yarrow and lavender and calendula and St. John's wort and comfrey, just to name a few of them, right? And like, so as you can see, like plantain is impressive and it has this whole long list and I could get, I could, if you knew me well, you would know, I could talk to you about all these things and I want to, but today I'm going to focus in on just talking to you about bug bites, okay? Because clearly when it's itchy, you're itching and you're irritated and you have infected bug bites, that's like one of the most common problems that we Arkansans have, and probably you do too, wherever you are. Like, and it just kind of bums out your summer. Like you're feeling great, and then you're like, oh, these chiggers. And I mean, and then, you know, you've been there, you're like hanging out with your friends, it's like warm, you're checking out the stars, or it's evening, if actually it's right at the sunset, right? The cool, the best time to be outside the best time to be in the garden. And like, you're getting swarmed. They're just like zzz, 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 swarming you. And um, your kids are all scratching. And then you're like, shoot, do I have to go like put on some long clothes? Do I have to like spray poison? What do I have to do? I have to go inside to escape all this like, I'm feeling attacked right now. So uh, what I wanna start to talk about is about bug bites themselves because actually what's causing the itch is not the bite, but when the bugs bite you, they release this anesthetic into your skin. This anesthetic, they inject it into you so that you don't feel them biting you or burrowing into you or drinking and sucking your blood. So you don't feel that, right? And if you happen to be one of the ones that's allergic to the anesthetic that they're injecting in you, then you are going to, you know, feel terrible. So your body's going to try to respond. And so it's going to send a bunch of white blood cells, right? And these are antibodies. And these white blood cells are going to create inflammation in your tissues. And then your red blood cells are going to want to try to help. And then it's going to make that inflammation turn really red. And then your body is going to be like, oh, histamines. Histamine responses are going to be really well-meaning and they're going to help. But then all of a sudden you have all these hive-like um, irritations that are just agitating and irritating. So it's your body's attempt to respond to the anesthetic that the bug is injecting into you that's causing all these symptoms. But this kind of explains why you are getting eaten up, but then the person right next to you hardly feels a thing. 
It's not that you got more bites than that person did. Everybody probably got the same amount of bites. It's just that you are more allergic or react or respond more to the anesthetic that the bug is injecting in you. So when you're thinking about a bug bite remedy, it needs to be effective, right? So it needs to be anti-itch, but it also needs to be anti-inflammatory, and it also needs to help prevent against an infection. So when you're thinking about what is a complete remedy for a bug bite, you want to cover all three of those bases. So, you know, here I am, an herbalist, and in our family, we rely on plantain throughout the summer. And either we have the plant or we have plantain in our salve, right? Because really, I really have to say that our healing salve is a great all-purpose salve, but it is one of the best bug bite relief remedies that I know and I I really believe in it. So I kind of want to share with you a little bit about what a, a plantain infused healing salve is and talk to you about what salve is. is. And so think of salve as an all natural ointment, right? It's salve is herbs that have been infused in olive oil and infused in beeswax and Think about healing salve particularly as an antibiotic balm and that can it can replace neosporin, it can replace like those synthetic um, hydrocortisone creams that are chemical laden creams that are over the counter. Healing salve is a natural replacement for those. And think about salve like it acts as a protector and as a guardian to your skin and to your tissues and it, it guards against the damaged tissues. And it's emollient and it's moistening and its properties can penetrate your skin. And then when the salve is absorbed into your skin, it pulls in and it brings in all the medicinal properties of the herbs. And so it brings the medicinal properties down into your tissues so that they can repair themselves. Mm. And so healing salve, our salve, is blended with plantain and yarrow and powde arco and organ grapefruit and calendula. And all of those are antiseptic and antimicrobial and really powerful herbs to help prevent infection and to help with the itch and to help repair the tissues. But essentially what I want you to think of is healing salve as a herbal first aid antibiotic ointment that's an anti-itch bug bite relief remedy. And in other videos, I'll tell you even more about how great it is, okay? So, but here you are, you have a bug bite. How are you gonna treat this bug bite with plantain? And there are a couple ways to do it. One way is, in, there's multiple ways to do it, but one way you can have this plantain leaf and you can, you, can, you can do it a lot of different ways. One thing you can do is you can take this leaf and you can wad it up and you could, if you wanted to, you could put it in a pestle and mortar and you could add a little water and you could add some activated charcoal or you could add some bentonite clay and you would mix it together, right? And you would make a paste. And you would take that paste and then you rub it right on the bug bite. And it's gonna bring instant relief, right? It's gonna cool it down. The bentonite clay is gonna pull and draw. That The activated charcoal is gonna pull and draw. And even the plantain has got a pulling and drawing action. And it's they're all very cooling, so it'll take the heat out right? But then, hey, don't worry if you don't have bentonite clay and activated charcoal because I just told you that in and of itself on its own without adding anything to it, it's a complete medicine, right? But if you're going to build a herbal medicine cabinet, you want those things in your medicine cabinet. They're kind of must-haves. But if you don't have it because you're out at the lake or you just took a walk or you're at the park and you just got stung by something, you can make a spit poultice. Okay, so what that looks like is you just do this. You gotta chew it up. I'm gonna take this down off. It's kind of fibrous and it tastes really green. 
and really important that you put a lot of saliva in there. Alright? Mm -hmm. Really chew it out. Mm -hmm. And then, while it's still all spitty and goofy, your, your saliva is actually really important too because it helps break down the cell wall and helps like activate the, the medicinal properties of the herb. And so then you get that little bug bite and you just place it right on top. And I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, that's so gross. But when it's hurting and stinging and you don't have access to other things, you'll be really grateful that, look, wow, you're starting to feel better really quickly. In terms of chewing up, the broadleaf one is gonna be easier to chew up, but just use whatever one you have, right? And then you just let it sit there until it falls off. Because, because plantain is gonna draw the poison out, that anesthetic out. Another thing you can do is if you're at home and you have all your resources, you could get a cup of water and you can get a cup, boil some water, take your leaf, smash it up, put it into the cup, pour the boiling water over the top, let it steep. In other words, you're making a tea or you could be making a wash. So you take the leaf out once it's cool and you lay the leaf directly on your area. If you were making a wash, what you would have done is you would pour some of the water over it and then place the leaf on. If you're making a tea, you pour a little on there, you stick the leaf on there, super simple, and then you drink the rest of the tea. Right? Right, so that's gonna help with a bug bite if you just have plantain. But what would you do if the bite started to get infected or you want to treat it more? If you wanted to treat it more, you could always do all those things first and then add some healing sap. But if this bite gets infected, like, man, every once in a while, my son, he would, most of the time it doesn't happen, but every once in a while, it's just the bites get really bad and you actually kind of have to treat them, right? And so to treat the bite, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna, it's pretty straightforward and simple. First thing you wanna do is wash it. Wash it with soap and water. And if you have it, you'll want to put some cesarean recovery spray. If you don't have it, you can always order it. I know it says cesarean recovery spray on the bottle, but think about what a cesarean is. A cesarean is a major surgery. It's a major trauma type cut that's been stapled and sutured together. So if this product is powerful and gentle enough to keep that wound clean so it can heal, bug bites are no problem, right? So this can also be called herbal first aid spray or herbal burn spray or herbal bug bite relief spray. This is an antiseptic spray that helps cool it, relieve the pain, and it will help keep the wound or the bug bite fresh and clean, right? So it cleans it out. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take some salve and um, see how beautiful it is. You're going to take some salve and you're gonna not contaminate the salve by sticking your dirty fingers in it. You're gonna keep it clean. And you just take a little salve out into your spoon and then sprinkle some cord care powder. Excuse me. So cord care powder is another product of ours that is really a powerful herbal antibiotic. It helps dry things and pull things to the surface and it helps prevent infection and it helps helps treat infection um, and so what I want to so what you do is you open it up and then you sprinkle a little of the core care powder this is a great dispenser because you're keeping this sterile and then using the spoon you're keeping this sterile and when you have an infection you don't want to cross contaminate so then you just stir it together and make a little paste and then you apply it to the bites and this way, when you add core care powder and the salve, it is totally reasonable to not have to use Neosporin or Calamine lotion or hydrocortisone for, to treat your bites. You'll want to keep them covered 
And then if it's really swelling and hurting, you can always lay an ice pack over the top of it and that'll help with the swelling. Another property about plantain, I mentioned it that it's antiseptic and um, styptic and it stops bleeding. But you'll notice if you chew a leaf like I just did, like my tongue is really dry and the inside of my mouth is really dry. That's really normal. That's astringent. That's perfect. That tells you the property of the herb. When you put the plant in your mouth and you wait a few minutes and you see how your tongue is responding, it's going to tell you how your tissues respond. So my tongue is normally wet and plump and moist and now it's feeling dry and like dry and as if like the moisture is being pulled out, right? So if you have a wet, oozy, funky bug bite or a raised, swollen mosquito bite or a tick bite or a chiggers, oh my gosh, chiggers, they're wet and you want to dry them and you want to cool them and you want to get that out. Plantain, this is a perfect example. You'll, as soon as you put it in your mouth, you'll see how and why it works. It's because it pulls it out, okay? Okay, so, however, before you start putting plantain in your mouth and sticking it in, on an open wound, you need to, I need to bring attention to a few things. First, make sure you have the right plant. Second, make sure your plant is clean and it's not contaminated from your pets or contaminated from pesticides or contaminated from herbicides. Because like I said, plantain pretty much grows anywhere and everywhere. So the plantain that's busting out through the sidewalk in a busy parking lot at the fast food restaurant is probably not the best, purest, cleanest specimen for you to be putting in your mouth. And if you look a little further and walk to the edge and look into the woods or walk a little further, you'll find a cleaner specimen to utilize. Okay? All right. So, what else do I wanna say? I just wanna say a couple, like another word of caution because I'm just talking about bug bites and tick bites and infection. If you get bit by a tick, this whole thing isn't, I'm not gonna elaborate so much, but if you get bit by a tick, you wanna pull the tick off, you wanna put it in a plastic bag, you wanna keep it. If you start to get infected, treat it this way, but if it doesn't dissolve right away, you wanna to go to the doctor. Tick-borne illnesses are a real deal, okay? Another thing is spider bites. Most spider bites are, are fine, but there are two of them, at least in Arkansas. You have brown recluses and you have black widows. Black widow is gonna leave like a, a puncture mark. At first, you're not gonna feel very much, and then a couple hours later, you might feel really bad and feel really bad and have stiffening, and you need to go to the doctor immediately if you think you have a black widow, right? If you have a brown recluse, some people respond way worse than others. At the same time, you should go to the doctor. I, I ha have helped a lot of people with brown recluse bites, so maybe this is something I could make a separate video on. There are a few more pieces than what I just said here, but what I just showed you here is the primary foundational piece that I share with everybody if they've gotten bitten by a brown recluse spider. So I need you to be safe and seek medical care if you feel like you've been bitten by a brown recluse. Okay, I just had to say that. And I'm starting to wrap this video up, but I just want to say like, you know, so as you can see, plantain is more than just a weed, right? It's medicine. And I mean, what is a weed anyways? And we all, I don't know about you, but I really admire the perspective of uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson and all the beautiful things he says about nature. And he's like, well, what's a weed? And, he, and the answer is just, a plant whose virtues have just not been discovered yet. And so I really, I can really agree with that. And, and also I just want to talk about being an herbalist, right? Have you ever fallen in love before? Like you might maybe have fallen in love with a person or with a hobby or in my case with plants, right? And the more you get to spend time with them, just the more, the deeper and deeper the unfolding and the understanding and the more you understand about them and you just grow deeper and deeper in love with them. 
And that's exactly how I feel about plantain. I mean, in this last little week preparing for this video, you know, I fell even more in love with plantain, not because that I discovered some other illness or some other discomfort that plantain can be a remedy for, but rather because I realize and can see how much plantain teaches us about what type of person we could be, right? Plantain is a teacher and a leader. And plantain, what I wanna say is it leads by example. So when you think about, it's yes, it's an invasive plant. That means it grows everywhere that people are. And that plant that grows everywhere that people are is usually telling you that it's good for you. It's available for you. It's making itself accessible and available. And then even though it's this invasive plant, it has this ability that it's a low profile plant, meaning it grows really low to the ground. And so it's really humble. And it doesn't draw a lot of excess or unnecessary attention to it. Most of the time you just scan the surface and you don't even notice it there, right? And plantain is a giver and it's a healer and it's food and it's medicine. And like I said before, it's completely capable as an individual and it's a team player. Plantain collaborates with all the other plants and it improves their qualities. And in my videos, I've made lots of videos now, and somehow or another, forgiveness has been a theme or a golden thread in many of my videos. And in a way, plantain is a great forgiver, or at least it's very compassionate, right? Because it helps soothe the irritated and agitated parts about ourselves. It helps soothe our pain from the inside and the outside. Right? It purifies, it guards, it protects, it holds, it heals. And it's gentle. It's gentle enough for newborns, and yet it's powerful and strong enough to be effective and to be respected. Right? In every way, plantain is a giver. It, it always finds a way to contribute to us, to our pets, and to other plants. I mean, there's been studies where people have taken broken tree limbs and broken plants and they put plantain on it and that helped that tree limb grow back together. The only thing that I can see plantain is taking is maybe it's taking up space. It could be taking up space in somebody's well manicured lawn. But I mean, this humble plant has so much to offer us and to give us physically and emotionally and spiritually that I see plantain as a role model at, for me as the type of person I would like to be, right? If I could hold space and contribute to you and contribute to your life in some way that's as humble as plantain, and if you watch this video and then your mosquito bites itch a little bit less, then that's a win, right? And I just want you to know that our salve, our healing salve, is formulated and blended and made with the same sort of compassion and effectiveness as plantain holds. And so for you to get some salve, the link is in the description. And if you want to order it because you've watched this video, I made a special code for you. And I'm not putting it in the description. You just have to listen. It's capital letters, plantain. There you go. And then you'll get 10% off your salve. Your salve is only available on our website, which is birthsongbotanicals.com. And I just really want to thank you so much for spending the time with me today. And if you're interested in herbs, we have a lot of videos about herbs. And in the comments, go ahead and share with us like what your experience is with plantain, what remedies you've made with plantain, and just any insights and other things that you've learned about this great teacher. And, really, I want you to push like and subscribe on this video and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, my friends, drink deep and always walk in beauty.